Hi guys, Wayne's Butler here. Well, I'm going to do, be doing a video that I said I wasn't going to be able to do. I told a number of you guys out there back in the day, actually when this uh, figure was kind of hot to trot, I was getting a lot of people wanting to know how I got this cape really close to the body. Uh, I know Rick's been uh, asked and stuff like that, so I ever I don't like being told I can't do something. So ever since I said that I wouldn't do it, I'm trying to figure out how a way that I could do it, I, at least attempt to do it. Uh, I, I want to do it at this time of day. I got a lot of natural light coming in the window here. Hopefully when this thing uploads, it's not going to be fucking blurry. Uh, but I'm going to try to explain what I've done here. So I, I don't want to make this video really long, so we'll get into it here. Okay, we'll start at the back. Let's look in the camera here and see if we're... Okay, I think I, I think this will work. So anyways, as you can see, guys, the, you start at the center seam. I'm only going to show one side, repeat for the other side. Everything's exactly the same. So you have the center seam coming down the center. That's your starting point. Now, before you start, uh, you want to pre-fold the cape at all the points. I think pretty well everybody has already kind of done that. And you kind of just kind of tuck it all in there for now. So anyways, center line, one inch over, your first fold. Your first fold is going to be one inch over, like I said. You tuck it in. Now the first fold, you want to tuck it in in front of the stand. You tuck it in in front of the stand. Uh, that's your first fold. And then you come to your second, the beginning of your next fold will be at that, that point down here. Okay, yeah, that point down here, that's the beginning of fold number two. And you grab the, the following point here, that follows it in between the center, make a fold, a tight fold. And tuck that in front of the stand, in front of the other, you know. So now you've got two folds tucked in, in front of that stand, and that what, and see, and that already pulls the back in tight. Now, the next fold is approximately halfway in between the two points. Let's look here. Yeah, I think it's coming through. You guys don't have tremor issues, so just ignore the shaking. Uh, so anyways, between the two points, you create another fold. Now, this fold, you want to fold, you make the fold. The excess, you want to push it forward this time. Not in behind the cape, not in behind the stand. I mean, uh, you push it forward. And you flatten it all out here. You get it all in. You're going to be OCD in it here once you get it all, you know, all the major folds done. Now, this is the most important fold. Uh, and before I get ahead of myself here, before you start doing this, guys, take your gauntlets. This is important. Take your gauntlets and turn them so the blades are in t uh, toward the body. Uh, you're not going to see them. Uh, the blade sticking out will actually be one of the reasons why the cape won't go in, and you don't want to be breaking the breaking them off while you're doing this. And they serve no purpose; you don't see them. So that's another little little secret. And at this point, now there's no more points. You're at, you're all out of points. <laughs> all you got is all this loose piece here. Now you, this loose piece here, you're going to be folding up. Uh, I would say about you know a couple inches over. Make a crease. Now this fold here that you're making, this crease, you're going to want to take your brush and you tuck it in under the arm. And you push the arm in, you know. Tuck it in under the arm like that. Now what you guys want to do with this piece, it's up to you. What I've done, I like to, I took the opposite end of this brush here and I brought it in under the cape, create kind of fluted. You don't want too many flat folds because that's not how the cape would naturally fold, uh, hang. It's going to be kind of fluted. So you create the flute with your brush and you tuck it in on the arm like I said. And you can create another one here and get kind of a, you know, this thing happening. Now the other important part, once you get that all folded, you have the wire that runs down the front here. Once it's all in there, you want to tweak it, play with it a little bit. You want to get it as straight as you possibly can because again, you want to create the illusion of weight. Uh, if it's all bent up like that, it does, you know, it just it takes away from the illusion. Because that's all this is. You just, it's a complete illusion. Or delusional. And uh, so that's that. I mean, and then once it's all in there, you kind of choke it. 
like I've been wanting to do a few times with this figure. You kind of choke the cape, kind of squeeze it with your hands, you get it all folded in, and you go around with the brush. You know, you can create little folds up here, and you know, you kind of, you know, create a little fold here. And just see the thing with this cape above the wire, it kind of has a mind of its own. So, how your cape will react to this, you know. It'll trust me, guys. It'll it'll be better than than what some of them are out there. I mean, if you've already kind of discovered this, this video won't mean anything to you. But I do know this was this was a a video. Uh, I don't. I haven't seen a video yet of somebody doing a tutorial on folding this cape. Uh, you know, I got the like I say the Tony Maez cape, the custom cape. Excellent cape. I don't want to take anything away from his craftsmanship. It's a nice look. I don't particularly like the cape myself, but a lot of you guys out there have it. And it is nice. His craftsmanship is really good. But the cape that actually wins the award for custom capes is, and I hope to God this is his name, is Dark Spartan. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I know Rick uh, done some uh, videos on his capes, and now half my hat goes off to him because his stitch work is phenomenal. Uh, you know the best cape, best custom cape out there. It's got a wire, more wires or less wires, and you know what I mean. Uh, his his cut and sew is uh, top notch. And you know, if I wasn't so far down the road with my quarter scale stuff, I would have uh, grabbed a cape off him for that. But you know, maybe he'll do quarter scale when it comes out. I'll be all over it. So I need to sort of play with it, guys. You know, take the brush here and just sort of. You know, you can get as OCD as you want. And that's that. And the other little little custom tip here, I just actually left a comment on Sean's Wolverine video, and I thought, you know, I'll add this on this one, because it's something that a lot of people have a problem with, is uh, loose ankle joints. Especially the 89 Joker. Now, how I fixed it is you pop the boot off, or the foot off, you know, whatever type of figure you have, and you take a you know a little piece of an elastic band and you and you cut a piece out just big enough to fit down inside the cavity of the foot or the boot, just big enough to fit down inside that, and you and you basically pop the peg back on, and the foot will be as tight as you want it to be, and it still is going to have uh, you know articulation. Uh, my 89 Joker, it's up there in that diorama without a stand, and that's what I did to the you know the 89 Joker was phenomenal or famous for having loose ankle joints. So I put, like I said, a little piece of the elastic band inside the, the, the boot cavity and popped it back on and that figure has been standing up inside that diorama without a stand and it's right on the floor. So it gets a lot of shaking and it hasn't fallen over. So uh, that's a little tip for, for loose ankle joints. And so we get that off the thing. Now we're going to be talking about something again that... I don't like talking about, and that's dioramas that I haven't started yet, but I, I think if I tell you guys what I'm doing, it's going to inspire me to keep this fire burning like I really want to do this. But, but anyways, this is a, you guys may or may not know what this is, it's linear actuator, six inch travel. Now, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing the obelisk inside the cave, you know where the, the cube comes up, the slate cube comes up out of the, the base of the cave. What I'm basically going to be doing is going to be a cube inside a cube. Uh, you know, the pitch of the base. This is going to be uh, inside a box, hidden inside a table. Uh, we'll get into all that. But the base will be set up here. There'll be a cube that will basically rise up inside the case. Railings go all weathered up. I'm going to make it all look at all pretty. And uh, it basically it's just going to rise inside the case. And when it comes to the top, it'll, I'll, I'm going to hook a switch up to it that will turn uh, the light on. And that's pretty well going to be it. Now, I'm not going to be, obviously be able to add water. You, you know, you can't have water inside a, show, a sealed showcase with your figure for obvious reasons. But it's basically going to be a cube or obelisk, whatever you want to call it, rising up inside the, uh, the case. That's what my brain says it's doing. Now, I have some experience in doing this. I've been in the car audio business for as a hobby for probably for the last 20 years. I've done a number of car show systems. Actually, my own car has a uh, seat motorized forward when you turn the stereo on to, to vent the sub. So I've had some experience with linear actuators and, uh, you know, wiring up the relays to, you know, make it go up and down. And so that is that. And the last thing, Carlos, 1-6 scale. 
he's back. The channel's called Carl's One Six Scale. I'm glad he's back. I didn't know what happened. I think a lot of us didn't know. I was kind of heartbroken, like a lot of us were. I don't think Carl's realizes how much he's needed in this community. I mean, uh, the collection that he has and, and his knowledge. Uh, you know, I pretty well said how I felt about the about the, the guy on Test Jess's video. You know, that's how I feel. Uh, he's always been a friend of mine, and uh, you know, I'm glad he's back. Sub to his channel, Carlos One Six Scale. And I, uh, well, the Hot Toys Batman. I guess we'll touch on that. I don't know when we're going to be seeing it. Uh, I'm guessing within the next month. I've been getting a lot, a few PMs from guys, kind of keeping me informed. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, when the pictures start popping up, please PM me. I even though if I probably will already have seen them, uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, I'm going to be getting that figure quick. You guys know I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to Batman. And uh, despite how we feel about getting figures early from Hong Kong, uh, I have a funny feeling there's a lot of guys out there that don't really care that they want me to get it as soon as possible and get my opinion up. Uh, as you guys know, I won't hold anything back. And I'm going to be as critical as I've always have been with Batman figures. So it should be an interesting unboxing, to say the least. So that's it for Saturday, guys. Wayne's Butler signing off. Peace and love to all.